was uh, when I was five, I did my first school play, and my dad took me up on his knee and he said, "Son, the lights, the stage, the audience." It's enough to turn your soul to soup. And that's exactly what the blacks want you to think. <laughs> should probably explain my dad was a racist drug user, going through the throes of some pretty traumatic meth withdrawal. <laughs> my mum has since remarried to a man with a yacht, which uh, significantly trumps my real dad's restraining order. <laughs> I like my women like I like my coffee. Hot, tasty, exotic. And then after a while you start to wonder whether you really wanted that coffee. Whether you didn't want one of the many other coffees on the menu. And so you sit staring at it as it gets cold and bitter and you find yourself drinking it not through a love <laughs> of its taste but through a dependency <laughs> after a while you and the coffee drift apart you move on from second rate coffee to second rate coffee never remembering them, never enjoying them so one day on a cold November, you see that coffee coming towards you in the street and she ignores you like you were nothing. <laughs> so you go home and you look for coffees that look like that first coffee and you fall asleep weeping after a self-pitying wank. <laughs> and uh, I don't drink coffee anymore. <laughs> So as you can probably tell, I come from money, from a very wealthy family, offensively wealthy some might say. Put it this way, growing up I had a TV in the living room, <laughs> colour, and uh, part of my kind of rich playboy lifestyle is uh, living abroad, and uh, I was living in Sweden. I'm back now. <laughs> Hello. <laughs>